This video is sponsored by NordVPN. In practically every video I put out on the ancient Near East, you'll generally hear the name of some language, whether it's Sumerian, Akkadian, Aramaic, or something else. In this program, I want to give you some more knowledge about the major languages that were spoken in ancient Mesopotamia during the Bronze Age, so that you can learn more about the linguistic diversity that, like today, existed in antiquity. We'll be concerned only with Mesopotamia, or the lands in between and around the periphery of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Before we continue further, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, NordVPN. I've actually been using specifically NordVPN for several years, and honestly, I love it. Some of you already know that I'm often on the go and used to live and work in several countries, and that's when I realized that I needed a VPN to protect any sensitive information while on a public network. For example, whenever I'd enter my password to check my email or bank accounts at my Airbnb or the airport, or to keep up with episodes of Game of Thrones when I was on the go without having to view some barely watchable pirated copy streaming from some shady site in Paraguay. Seriously, true story. NordVPN allowed me to do this and more. Nord can be used on any PC, phone, tablet, or related device using Windows, Android, iOS, Mac OS, Linux, or any other major operating system. And with over 5,000 servers in 60 countries, it's also one of the most versatile as well as the fastest VPN service out there. To celebrate NordVPN's 10th birthday, go to nordvpn.com backslash history with Sai to get the two year plan with an exclusive deal plus one month free and a bonus gift. It's risk free with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. Again, that's nordvpn.com history with Sai. Check out NordVPN today. One thing we should remember is that there were many different languages belonging to different language families that were spoken in Mesopotamia since long before the dawn of history. Archaeologists have identified several different cultures, and it's very likely that each of them had their own language. However, we don't really know anything about them because none of them were committed to writing. It's through writing, and more importantly, the decipherment of that writing, that we're able to, today, identify and understand different languages. The earliest language of Mesopotamia to have been deciphered is Sumerian. As you may know, the Sumerians are credited by most scholars as being the first to have invented writing. We call the script that they developed cuneiform, and it was initially written by imprinting wedge-shaped marks into soft clay with a reed or wooden stylus. As we'll soon see, this type of script was adopted and modified by other peoples to write down their own languages. The original source of the Sumerian language is currently unknown, but by the 4th millennium BC, it had become the dominant tongue in southern Mesopotamia in the area known as Sumer, which today makes up most of southern Iraq. The language in the area that preceded it, which linguists call Ubaidian, since it was spoken by the previous culture known as the Ubaid, has survived in small part due to some words that were adopted by the Sumerians. For example, the names of rivers and common words such as date and palm. This though is really all that we know about the language that preceded Sumerian. The beginnings of the Sumerian cuneiform script were hatched around 330 BC. This proto-cuneiform script consisted of pictographs that were used to record transactions involving wheat, beer, and livestock. With at least 700 different signs representing the most common words, it was rather complete. Over time, the symbols changed into a form that was easier and quicker to be written down, giving us the more familiar cuneiform script that we see today. Because of cuneiform's practical uses in commerce and administration, the Sumerian language spread far beyond Sumer, and the script was eventually adopted in modified forms in areas hundreds of miles from the Sumerian heartland. For example, the city of Ebla, the ruins of which are today in western Syria. During the millennium roughly between 3300 to 2300 BC, the Sumerian language reigned supreme in most of central and southern Mesopotamia. This doesn't mean that it was the only language spoken in this region. 
far from it. Because Sumerian was the language of administration, commerce, popular culture, and religion, which is reflected in the various tablets and texts that we have from the time, it may seem this way. However, at least one other language was also widely spoken, especially in northern Sumer, and that was Akkadian. Akkadian is much better understood than Sumerian because it actually belongs to the Semitic family of languages and is related to other widely understood Semitic languages such as Aramaic, Hebrew, and Arabic. Though not mentioned or represented much in early Sumerian texts, by 2500 BC, most scholars contend that large numbers of Akkadian, or perhaps Proto-Akkadian speakers, were living in areas north of the holy city of Nippur. This area would eventually become known as Akkad. Around 2330 BC, an Akkadian king by the name of Sargon came to power, conquered, and united the land of Sumer under his banner. It's believed that around this time, the Akkadian language began to be written down using the Sumerian cuneiform script. Of course, to learn how to use such a script, the Akkadian scribes had to also learn the Sumerian language, and it's actually thanks to their many bilingual and scribal texts that they used to learn Sumerian that modern linguists were also eventually able to decipher that language. Sargon of Akkad made Akkadian the official language of the realm, thereby replacing Sumerian as the language of administration and official business transactions. This had a profound effect on the society of not just Mesopotamia, but the Near East in general. At its height, the Akkadian Empire didn't just encompass Sumer, but lands far from it, including those touching the Mediterranean Sea on one end, to others bordering the salt deserts of Iran. It also stretched from what's today the Persian Gulf to the mountains of southeastern and central Anatolia. Akkad, and not Sumer, was the center of this vast empire, and with the Akkadian language now being the official one, it spread to all corners of the empire. Though there was a great cultural revival of all things Sumerian during the reigns of the Neo-Sumerian kings between 2112 and 2004 BC, Sumerian as the common language, even amongst the people of Sumer, continued to decline until about 1600 or 1500 BC when it had been all but replaced by Akkadian. Though no longer being spoken in the cities and streets, Sumerian was used by scholars and scribes for at least the next 12 to 1500 years as a religious and classical language, much like Latin during the Middle Ages, and actually even in our own day. To be a scholar or scribe of high rank, you had to learn Sumerian. Otherwise, you had little respect amongst your peers. One of the reasons often cited for the downfall of the Neo-Sumerian state is the advent of groups of people known as the Amuru, migrating into the fertile lands of Mesopotamia from the west. We call these people Amorites, and they had their own language, which we conveniently call Amorite. And though it had no written form, we know a good deal about it because one, it's a Semitic language that's very similar to Akkadian, and two, many Amorite words found their way into Akkadian language documents. By 1900 BC, Amorite chieftains had not only settled their people within the confines of Mesopotamia, but also established kingdoms of their own, the most famous being the Kingdom of Babylon. Within a few generations, the Amorite language died out, as the descendants of those who originally spoke it widely adopted Akkadian as their mother tongue. Over time, Akkadian evolved into various dialects, with the two main ones being the Babylonian and Assyrian dialects. In some history books, especially older ones, you might read about texts being written in Babylonian, or proclamations in Akkadian, implying that these are two separate languages, when in actuality, they're versions of the same language, Akkadian. Despite the prevalence of Akkadian, by 1500 BC, other languages were also widely spoken within the Near East, especially in northern Mesopotamia. One of these was Hurrian, 
whose origin is still unknown, though it's related to another language, Urartrian. Hurrian was widespread in the northern regions of Mesopotamia that today make up much of northern Iraq, northern Syria, as well as south and southwestern Anatolia. Its speakers were called Hurrians, and their presence has been recorded in the region at least as far back as 2200 BC. A modified version of the Sumero-Akkadian script was adopted for written Hurrian. Hurrian was widely spoken within the confines of what later became known as the Kingdom of the Mitanni, but after that state's demise, it slowly faded out as Akkadian, and to a lesser extent, languages such as Luvian, Hittite, and a few others replaced it. Other non-Sumerian and Akkadian languages commonly spoken in southern Mesopotamia were Elamite and Kassite, both from the east in what's today Iran. Elamite was the language of the neighboring land of Elam, which throughout the Bronze and Iron Ages had political and commercial ties to Sumer and Akkad. Texts from commercial centers such as Lagash, Larsa, and Babylon indicate the presence of Elamite speakers there, along with several prominent families of Elamite origin. Like the other languages mentioned, Elamite was also written using a modified version of the Sumerian and Akkadian cuneiform script. Another fairly common language, especially in central Babylonia, was Kassite. This is probably the least understood of all of the major Bronze Age languages spoken in Mesopotamia. The Kassites were a people from the Zagros Mountains, known for their skills in horsemanship. Groups of them eventually migrated into Babylonia, where they served as manual laborers and horse breeders. After the fall of Babylon's first dynasty in 1595 BC to a Hittite army led by Murshili I, a Kassite dynasty soon rose to power and consolidated its hold over most of Babylonia. Though many at the time spoke Kassite, we know only a few words from bilingual dictionaries that were compiled, and most of the words contained in them are of various Kassite deities or terms related to horses and plants. So, I hope that this short program gives you a better idea of the various languages that were widely spoken in Mesopotamia during the Bronze Age. In the future, we'll take a closer look at some of these and other languages that were common throughout the Near East. Stay tuned. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'd also really like to thank GrandKex69, Yap de Graf, Pasta Frola, Michael Lewis, Daniel Allen, Danny Van Eck, YNXTV, Robert Morgan, Frank, Tim Lane, Sebastian Hurtado Correa, Michael Trudell, Franz Robbins, Brendan Redman, Faridun Dadachanji, Jimmy Daruwala, Sher Cam, Farhad Kama, and all of the channel's patrons on Patreon for helping to support this and all future content. Check out the benefits to being a Patreon member, and if you'd like to join, feel free to click the link in the video description. You can also follow History with Sai on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as continue to listen to special audio programs on the History with Sai podcast. Thanks again, and stay safe.